Okay. Begin uh, to just, let's just wait a second. You're on camera. Okay. Okay. Roll. My name is Yetta Bergstein, and I was born in 1932 in a Polish town called Pordipce, very small town. And there were only about three or four Jewish families. Um, I was a real tomboy. <laughs> I had to fight off all the non-Jewish boys that used to fight with me, but they never picked on me because I used to fight back. Do you have brothers, sisters? Um, I have a sister, yes, five years younger. And um, we, uh, we, we, um, when, well, I went. I started school during uh, before the war, but didn't go far because I was only seven when the war started. And um, we were very lucky. I was very lucky because my parents and my sister and my mother's sister uh, stayed alive. We survived the Holocaust, so I was really very lucky. And um, but we went through hell. We had to. We, we were hiding. My mother and my mother's sister, my aunt, uh, were taken to a camp to cook for the Germans. Uh, but they were allowed to sleep outside of the camp. And uh, they befriended some Russian soldiers that came over to the Germans. And they were working. They worked as guards in the camp. And uh, they liked my mother. and my aunt. So before they liquidated the camp, they told them that they were going to liquidate and my my mother and my aunt ran away. <clears throat> what year would this be? Uh, this was in 1942 or 43, someplace around there, 42 I think. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> so after that, we were hiding from place to place, and some. Uh, the funny thing is, the the people, the Polish people that we thought were friends of ours, were afraid to take us in, and the Ukrainian friends that we had that really weren't very friendly towards us were the ones that were hiding us. They risked their lives too. They did. They risked yeah. their lives. Yeah, and uh, uh, yeah, we stayed with the. Um, four or five different families. We went from one family to the other. You know, sometimes uh, somebody found out, so we had to run out. And, uh, but we survived. We, um, the last, the last three, get him out of here. The last three weeks before uh, they, the uh, Russians started bomb, bombing the town, um, we, uh, <clears throat> I went to another town to look for food because I didn't look Jewish and I was uh, around eight or nine at that time. And I used to tell people my, par my parents were sick and I, you know, I needed some food and stuff. So uh, I went to another town and they started bombing and that family wouldn't let me go back because they were afraid I might get killed. They, they didn't know I was Jewish. So I stayed with them for three weeks. And uh, sometimes on, uh, on weekends, on a Sunday, they used to take me, they wanted to take me to church, and I made myself sick or something so that I wouldn't go. I've never been to church. So, um, so they did not ask if you were Jewish? Or? Oh, no, no. They, no, I told them I was Polish. And Good. Um, so, you know, I spoke Polish and I spoke Ukrainian, so whichever family I went to, and if I knew they were Polish, I spoke Polish. And um, after three weeks, I finally ran away, and I went back to my town to see if my family was alive, because the Russians came in at that time, and they wanted me to stay with them. So I, I came to town, and the beginning of town, I had some friends there. So this girl came out, and I asked her, I said, did you see my parents? So she said, no, they were all dead. That was I, the first you heard of them. 
that that was the first I heard. Uh, dead. So I kept I kept going and I kept crying and I kept going to see where my house was. And I went to the neighbors next to, to our house. Uh, and I opened the door and there they are. My parents, my oh, parents, my parents are there with my sister and my aunt. Wow. <laughs> and I, for the life of me, I could not understand why that girl said that they were all dead. Wow. Because they figured that out. So after that, we, uh, we moved uh, to a city next to the town because our house was burned down. They, I guess they bombed it or, I don't know, they, somebody burned it down. And uh, we stayed there for a while. I started school uh, under the Russians. I started school. And, uh, so you were liberated, <coughs> the Russians liberated uh, you? Yes, uh-huh. In 45? In 45, yeah. Okay. And uh, so we stayed together, but we had family in the United States. And uh, my parents got in touch with them. On both sides, my dad and my mother's side, we both had families. And uh, they brought us down here in 1947. And um, yeah, it was really, <laughs> it was something. We came at night and we passed by uh, the Statue of Liberty. And that was really something. It was the emotional Ah, uh -huh. it was something. It was really, uh, yeah. And when we came to the um, port, uh, some of my dad's cousins sneaked into the oh. boat, which uh, <laughs> my dad recognized her from, from a picture, oh. and it was really amazing. Oh. So um, they took us to, um, well, our, our cousins were waiting for us, uh, but they couldn't come out on a boat. I don't know how these two cousins came on the boat. And uh, so they took us to Newark. Uh, that's where my, uh, my mother's cousins were living there. Oh, no, we went to Brooklyn first. I'm sorry. We went to Brooklyn. Uh, my mother's aunt and cousins lived in Brooklyn, and we stayed with them for about three or four months. And my dad had a job. He had to have a job before he got here. Now people come just like that. Then he had to have a job uh, waiting for him. So we stayed with them for about three or four months, and then we got an apartment in uh, New York City. And. Um, so we lived on Menjin Street, about uh, one block before East River Drive. And uh, I started school. And uh, my sister went to school. And we met, I met my husband um, at a dance. Oh. <clears throat> it was like 1947? Uh, yeah. In, well, yeah, around 1947, 1948. Mm -hmm. uh, ben came in 1946. Um, they used to have dances for the newcomers. So that's, that's where we met. And uh, we... Um, actually, I was going out with another guy. <laughs> but he didn't know how to dance, and I used to love to dance. And Ben was a very good dancer. So... Uh, the other guy used to sit and watch us dance, and after a while, I just broke up with him and started going out with Ben. Um, I went to high school in New York, and then my parents went to school in the evening, so we used to check on each other. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, was, uh, it was great to be in this country, believe me. It was great. Can't complain about this country. Um, what we kind went, of job did your father wind up doing? What kind of work did My you dad do? was doing, uh, back east he used to have a flour mill uh, that ran by water. Oh. I'll show you a picture. I, uh, I did a uh, needlepoint of oh, the I flour mill. That. And uh, 
Yeah, he had the the only thing he couldn't speak any English or anything, so they got him a job in a uh, in a factory uh, to do um, uh, I think corsets. Oh, that were, were doing corsets. Yeah, he, he never he never saw one before. <laughs> And they were making hats. No, not that. No. I don't think so. How about your mom? What, uh, what was she, did she do? Well, my mom uh, wasn't allowed to work until we were bigger, <laughs> until we uh, finished school. So uh, that, that, that was my dad's thing, European thing. Yep. Women stayed home. And uh, <clears throat> so, um, let's see. We we started going together for a while, and uh, when I finished high school, uh, I finished high school in January. We got married in April. Stop that! Are you supposed to feed him or something? They ate already. <laughs> oh, Sasha, stop it. They're we, jealous because you're a kid. Yeah. Right. We got married in April, and uh, three weeks later, he went into the army. <laughs> Uncle Sam wanted him. Oh, and, yes, uh, Sasha. Oh, you're such a pain in the neck, Sasha. You really are. <laughs> he gets very jealous when I talk. Oh, this looks like it could be a short tape, huh? Yeah, well, I really didn't go into all the uh, stuff, but, uh, you know, I didn't want you to run out of tapes. No, I got, I got another <laughs> one, too. And um, Ben went to, in the Army, and I stayed with my parents, um, but he was discharged, um, I think, seven or eight months later. Um, because he was he was getting terrible nightmares, uh, you know, like like being in a concentration camp with all these guys together and everything else. And uh, um, and uh, a year and a half later, we had our daughter, our first daughter. And uh, yeah, she's. We had two boys after that, and they all married and they have families. Oh, that's nice. Where do they live? Um, our daughter lives in California. One son lives in Colorado, and one son lives here. Oh, nice. so we are in the middle of everybody. <laughs> yeah. So you keep in touch with. Uh huh. Everyone. Yeah, and my sister lives in uh, New Jersey. She's still there. Yeah, we lived in New Jersey for quite a while too before we moved here, but we've been uh, in Arizona for about. Um, 22 years now. Good place to June be. will be 23 yeah. years, and we love it. Wouldn't move out of here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we feel the same way. Yeah, I yeah. told my husband if he wants to move, he's moving by himself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where you move um, <laughs> to, to find a better place, really. No, really, you can't. Yeah, Just My daughter that. keeps telling me, she says, how come you never go on vacation? I feel I You're feel right. like I'm on vacation all the time. Yeah, <laughs> especially since we retired, yeah. you know. But uh, yeah, good. we worked hard. And uh, what kind of work did uh, Ben do when he left the army? Um, he uh, what did oh he worked in a um, um, clothing factory. He uh, he used to be the cutter for. Uh, Courtshire. In New York? Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, very high style suits and coats. Oh. Uh, yeah. And uh, I used to work for a Stephen Dorman company, also in New York, uh, okay. on Bowling Green. I was there okay. for a few years, and then we moved to New Jersey from there. And uh, in New Jersey, I went to beauty school, and I did hairdressing for about 18 years. Wow. Yeah. Your hair is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, I did that, and then when we came here, I was cooking. I became a cook. Um, I worked in the uh, in a little cafe in Fountain Hills here, did the dinners, 
And uh, then I did all the cooking uh, for Basha for the steaming table, steam table. Oh, nice. Yeah. Was it? They have great steam tables. I, I've tried some of their food. It's great. Yeah, and I, I used to do all the really cooking from scratch. I used to make, um, you know, the lasagna and the... the Where did you learn how to cook for your mom? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my mom used to cook it uh, in uh, uh, Catskills in the summertime. Oh, yeah. So I stayed home with Dad, and I used to do the cooking for him. <laughs> the first meal we threw out. <laughs> After that, I was fine. Yeah. yeah, my mother was the kind of a cook that said, uh, children are not, you know, allowed in the kitchen when I'm cooking. <laughs> yeah, it so, sounds familiar. Yeah, so I really uh, I learned to cook on my own. And I always loved it, loved to cook. I watch all the food stations. It's wonderful. Yeah. And uh, so now we have the two dogs. Uh, that, that's our second set. <laughs> second yeah. set of dogs? Yeah, the same dogs. Same yeah, I love them. And we have four grandchildren. And... Uh, Life is pretty good right now. It's good. It's good. <laughs> I wish we were healthier, but especially my husband. But well, he's hanging on. can like Yeah, yeah, he's you're hanging helping on. Him. You're yeah, helping. I'm trying, trying to help. Do all I can. That's good. Yeah. <clears throat> what else would you like to know? Uh, <laughs> I think we almost have enough. I think what I would like. For you guys to be able to sit for life masks, though. So that's going to be like another day. Mm -hmm. I don't think we could do it today. I've got everything here. But it's it's like 45 minutes for each person. And no. it's preparation no. and cleaning. I, and have, I have to feed him because he's diabetic, yeah. so. Hey, my wife is too. Mm. Diabetes too, she has. Yeah, that's what he does. Yeah, he was in his 50s when he became diabetic. Wow, he started early. Yeah. Can you spell the name? It's, we're on again. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Spell it, the the town. A bit. Yeah, just the, the town, town where I was born. In. Okay. Yeah. It, Podlipce. That's P O D L I P C E. Podlipce. The way. How far is it? What's the big town near it? Uh, the big city was Lotchuf, and that was, um, um, oh, I would say about maybe 12, 15 miles. Can you spell those two towns again? Yeah. Uh, the first one? P-O-D. P-O-D. P-O-D, like David. L-I-P-C-E. Podlipce. The way it sounds. And, and, and the uh, city was Locha. Z L O. Sasha. Z L O. Yeah. Okay. C Z. Okay. Zero W. Slochev. Okay. That's Poland. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I got the ones that you wrote down to your husband's. <laughs> yeah. <You> got those. <laughs> Okay, what about your, your town? Was it, uh, what was the, uh, was there a lot of uh, Jewish people that lived in town? No, there were only four families, and there was another little uh, young girl my age. We were in school together. And she was afraid of her own shadow. She was very delicate, and, you know. And I was a real tomboy, so yeah. I used to have to fight for both of them, for both of us. She, uh, yeah, I... One time I remember one, um, that was a, a Ukrainian priest. His son was sitting in the class behind me, and I had long braids. And he took one braid and he put it in the inkwell. And I, <laughs> I smacked him in his face. <laughs> so when I came home from school, I see his father walking up. Well, he and my dad were very friendly, actually because of him that we are alive. Uh, oh, this Ukrainian priest. Okay. Uh, we were, yeah, my, my dad and he used to talk all the time. They were very good friends. 
And <clears throat> his son, uh, we were always very friendly and everything, but when he put my <laughs> braid in the inkwell, I really smacked him in the face, and he went home crying, I guess, or something. So his father came up, and he wanted to know what happened. So I showed him my braid, you know. So he went home, and he gave a few <laughs> smackaroos. <laughs> <laughs> we became the best of friends afterwards. He never touched me. Uh, no, the kid, the kids didn't bother me because I used to fight back. I didn't take so any. So you noticed that anti-Semitism? Oh, sure, too. sure. I mean, during the war, uh, uh, there was a couple with a child that uh, came from, the Germans came there first. So they ran away and they came, they stayed with us for a few months, I think. And um, one evening we were sitting and eating and somebody shot through the window and shot the guy. He didn't die, but he, he really was wounded. wounded. Yeah. And so my mother ran out and um, she recognized the person that shot him. She knew him. Uh, but she was afraid to say anything. She she never, you know, mentioned to anybody who it was. I mean, she told my dad, but she never mentioned to anybody, neighbors or anything. And uh, th that was really frightening. And shot right through the window, shot him. Um, and, Did he uh, die? No, he didn't die. Is he it? was just wounded. Uh, the person that was shot, and where did he live? They came from Poland someplace. We didn't know these people. I, was I it don't a know. neighbor? The one that was shot and wounded? No, no. We didn't know them, actually. I don't know how they, uh, how they found us. They moved to town. And some, I don't know if somebody sent them to us. or uh, I don't remember what happened, uh, uh, okay. how they came. But your mother was aware of who did the shooting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she knew and who. She was afraid to. Say she was anything. afraid to say anything. Sure. Maybe that was good that she kept quiet. Of course, yeah. of course. I mean, he could have, you know, shot everybody. Yeah. yeah. So um, it, it was frightening. Yeah, there was plenty in, in school and everything. And uh, yeah, we had we had a few very good uh, friends, neighbors. Some were Polacks and some were Ukrainian. Uh, and it, I don't know why, but we always thought that the Polish people were friendlier than the Ukrainians, but actually the Ukrainians are the ones that really uh, hit us. And that is that's surprising. It, because it, the stories I've heard is the Ukrainians were worse than the Germans in mm, killing Jews. Mm, yeah, and actually So there were some Polish, friendly, there were some the, friendly Ukrainians. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they all used to come. My aunt had a, a small uh, store in the house, one room. She had a little store. And uh, they all came shopping to us. <coughs> but, uh, no, we, we, uh, we were very lucky. We really were very lucky because my dad was hiding through the whole time. My mother and my aunt were cooking in the concentration camp. Uh, but it was. Um, what was the name of the camp? Concentration camp. Uh, they had like about ninety of them in Germany. Mm -hmm. Well, camp. this was a, a hard labor camp. Uh, I mean, uh, so it, the it way wasn't they. A concentration camp. No, it was, it was a, a hard. Camp. Yeah, uh, the way they used to kill people that got sick or didn't do the work or something, is hang them upside down until they died. Hanging by their feet? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. That's how they they took care of people. But um, most of the guards there were Russians. Oh. And uh, my mother and my aunt used to cook, you know, stuff for them, special stuff. And uh, they liked them, so they told them before they liquidated the place uh, to run. <clears throat> and you did? They did, yeah. Well, my sister and I stayed uh, with a family in that town, and my my mother. Nobody knew that we were Jewish. They uh, he he said that we were his sister's kids, and his sister got killed. 
so we came to live with them. That was Ukrainian family? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was Ukrainian family. As a matter of fact, after the war, their son got killed. Um, he found a grenade in the field someplace, and he tried to take it apart, and he was yeah blown to, to smithereens. Wow. Yeah. They had a daughter and a son, and... Uh, that was really terrible. They were nice people. They really, uh, I mean. Did they realize that they were risking their own lives and protecting you? Which well, they, thought you were, uh, nobody, they didn't know you were Jewish. So uh, that, that they helped. knew we were Jewish, but nobody else did. Yeah. No, they knew we were Jewish. And actually, it was just one town away from ours, you know. Oh. So, but we didn't go to school or anything. We just stayed in the house. We, he, you know. But if anybody asked him, he said his sister was killed and we are living with them. But uh, it, it, was, it was really very hard. Uh, it was frightening, especially for kids, you know. Uh, you, you see people screaming and crying, you know. Um, you know, when they, they were hanging upside down, you could hear them. Where we lived, we could hear them. And it was just. And that, uh, was, that was punishment for. Either being sick or not doing your work uh, right, or if they felt like doing it, you know? It could be that simple. Yeah. 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 They, they didn't care. Life didn't mean anything, especially if it was Jewish. The Germans Jewish that life. were doing this or the Ukrainians? Uh, both. Both. Yeah, they were both doing it. <clears throat> wow. They were both doing it. And. Uh, of course, we were hiding in the woods also. <laughs> I remember one time uh, my dad made a um, dug a hole, and then uh, they took some uh, big branches and put over the hole so we could sleep in there. And <clears throat> so one time I went, I went to that uh, place, to that Ukrainian uh, couple, uh, couple that kept us, I went to ask for some bread and, you know, st some food. And when I was coming back, there were Germans all around the uh, forest where we were hiding. They had maneuvers at that time. And somebody saw me and he kept yelling, you know, in Polish that I was Jewish. And I kept running and... Um, he, uh, they didn't understand what he was talking about. So I ran, I started crying, and I said, Papa, Papa, Papa. You know, there was my father running after me, and the Germans were laughing. And I came in the, into the woods, and I couldn't find my parents or, or my sister where they were there. Uh, well, they heard the Germans come, so they kept going in uh, deeper and deeper into the woods. And I kept crying, and I kept calling, wow. Papa, Papa, Papa. All of a sudden, somebody put a hand on my, uh, over my mouth. And my dad says, will you stop screaming? There are Germans all over. I said, well, you know, I was a kid. I didn't know. I was only about nine, yeah. nine or ten years old. Um, he said, my sister started crying. Uh, in the place where they were, so they were afraid that she might, you know, they might hear her. So they took her, in, and she was only about three or four years old. So they took her in, and, um, you know, closed her mouth, and they kept going into deeper into the woods. Uh, boy, when he put his hand on my <laughs> mouth, I thought that was it. I'm finished. You're fine. You know. My my dad, yeah. He wanted to keep you quiet. Sure. Yeah. yeah, I kept calling him and calling yeah. him, you know. And he thought and, <laughs> very likely the Germans could hear it. Oh, sure. Really. Well, they were, you know, it, it was, it was um, I guess, about a month or maybe five weeks before the war finished, before the, uh, the Russians came in. But it, it was really scary. Everybody was afraid to keep us at that time. Oh, yeah. So uh, that's but what you, happened. How long did you live in the forest? 
Oh, we were there for a few months. In we a were hole? there a few. They yeah. Hole yeah. And covered it with branches. Yeah. Wow, sleeping must have been tough. And uh, yeah, and so then at was... night, at night, my mother used to go into town uh, and and try, you know, to go through garbage cans and try sometimes to a neighbor to you know get a piece of bread or something. Um, um, yeah, we lived like mice. Wow, but you lived. Yeah, thank you God. Survived. Yeah, and it was you and your sister. My sister and my dad and my mother and my aunt. All of you survived. Yeah. Wow. And yeah. you all lived in that one uh, in the forest. Yeah. <coughs> together. Mm hmm Yeah. Boy. Yeah. Uh, most of the time, my aunt and I were together in one place, and my sister and my you dad and my mother. Different, different uh, homes. Whole, whole, yeah. Home, well, homes, homes, not homes, and either in uh, uh, attics or in basements, you know. But um, yeah, the, I'll, <laughs> I'll tell you, it, it's but sleeping in the ground for like uh, close to a month. Yeah, well, it's ca yeah, it's or, catching or, up with us now. <laughs> arthritis and everything. Yeah, um, yeah. My dad was ninety-seven when he died. Oh wow! How, yeah. how long ago? When did he die? Um, when did Dad died? You know what? Ninety six. Was it ninety? No. And your mom? Um, my mom died. She was only seventy four when she died. She died a long time ago. You've got good genes. She mom. had. Uh, yeah, my aunt is still living. She's ninety eight. Wonderful. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, she's. Uh, That's your mother's sister. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, my dad always used to say that his grandmother lived to be 108. She was 106 when she died when she danced at his wedding. <laughs> <laughs> what a nice story. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I don't, my mother got uh, ovarian cancer. She died of ovarian cancer at 74. How about her family? Uh well, she had. Well, you knew the you knew her sister. She just the aunt. She just had. She well, just she had the just one had sister. sister. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, just like I do. What about just her, one her sister. parents? Or you know the uh, extended family. Oh, uh, they her they were family. all killed. They were all killed, and in. in uh, um, How about your father's extended family? My father <clears throat> was one of uh, ten siblings. And he's the only one. Well, his mother died, and his father remarried, and she had one daughter. Um, but he, all his brothers and sisters, everybody's was killed. Uh, as, as a matter of fact, he, um, after the war, when we moved... Uh, in, uh, we moved in Poland closer to Germany so we could come to the United States because we have to come we had to come f through Germany and he uh, a friend of ours was a policeman and he met the guy the German guy that uh, hit my father uh, yeah he he beat him up pretty bad he beat up your father? Yeah. Pretty bad. Yeah. So uh, he came over and he said, Sal, would you like to take some revenge on the guy? We have him in jail. And so my dad came back. His hand was so swollen. Good. <laughs> he said he beat him up so bad. Wonderful. And Is that uh, a good story? Yeah, he, uh, he was... Yeah, his his family, most of them are, are all buried in one hole. They were all killed, all his... And all of them except the one daughter uh, that his stepmother had were married and they had families. They were yeah. all killed, every one of them. He was the only one that 
survived. And it was amazing that he was sane, I'll tell you. <laughs> People used to come to him. He, he was really a wonderful guy. Your father? Wonderful man. He, when he died, he had a standing room only. No kidding, no. Was he, where was he when he died? He died here. Here? Mm-hmm. Wow. Not, not in Arizona. He died in Arizona. My dad, he was with us for nine months. He was here in nine months, sure. Because I remember yeah. you went to pick him up. Yeah, he, wow. I, yeah. I called him up and I said his, uh, his second wife uh, was, um, I guess she had Alzheimer's. <clears throat> so her son put her in the, in the home. And he wanted to put my dad in the home. And I said, no, my dad doesn't go in the home. As long as I'm alive, he'll be with me. So, so I, with you. Yeah, so I called him up and I said, uh, when are you coming out? Well, you know, at my age, she says, I can't make any arrangements and stuff. I said, you know what? I got, so I got uh, tickets. I got two tickets. <laughs> And I called him up. Where was he at that time? In New Jersey. New Jersey. I called him up. I said, you start packing. I'm coming tomorrow, and you're coming with me. <laughs> and I brought my aunt with him too, <laughs> with wow. me. So she stayed here for three months, and he stayed for nine months, and he died. He had a stroke, and he died. Up until then, he his memory, the his was memory was better than mine. Yeah, he was in the hospital for three days, and uh, <clears throat> then... Uh, Which hospital was he in? One here? Yeah, here. yeah, uh, uh, over at... Uh, Shea? In Shea. In Shea mm -hmm. North? Yeah, mm -hmm. and then um, uh, Dr. Myers uh, thought he should go to a, uh, a place to uh, recuperate. So he was there nine, nine days, I think nine days, and he died there. Yeah. You were a good daughter. But I, uh, I had him here for nine months, which was that great. Was wonderful. Yeah. My sister, uh, my sister lived right, oh, about ten, fifteen minutes from him. Uh, but they're always very busy there. They belong to every organization. She and her husband, and everything. So she's still there. So she mm -hmm. want, yeah, she wanted him to stay with her. So he says to me, what's the difference staying in a big house by yourself or in a little house by yourself? Yeah. You know. But... Um, so he chose to... Uh, well, I... To I him. You kind of... I didn't give him a choice. Yeah. I just went to pick him up. <laughs> I think he appreciated it. We had a great sure. time here. Yeah, he, he really liked... He yeah. loved it here. That's uh, he I loves the flowers and everything else. I used to have flowers and all the... Uh, on top of the uh, wall outside. But uh, since my husband got sick, I really don't have time to take care of them. Nope. You're doing what you have to do. Yeah. 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 I think this is good. I think we got enough. Okay. Hey, this last part is better. You know, <laughs> it helps. 